Now let's think about collisions in a bigger way. Let's think about collisions as describing how multiple bodies move as a system. How you can take a bunch of interacting objects and think of them as one big object with internal interactions going on. We've actually sort of been doing this. We've been thinking about impulsive masses is my nickname for them. That basically means we have M1 and we have M2 and they're headed for each other and they have some sort of either elastic or inelastic interaction and we've calculated everything that happens. The initial and final velocities, we could think of that as one object just going through some internal uh, interactions. Another would be interacting masses. So here, these are certainly interacting, but it's very impulsive. They, don't, they ignore each other, and then they hit each other, and then they interact. You could also have bodies that interact all the time. So the uh, good example is the solar system, right? So all the planets in the solar system are interacting um, due to the gravitational interaction with the sun and each other, and there's moons around the different planets and all this stuff. It's all going around, all these interactions. But you can think of the whole solar system as just moving, and it's... Uh, uh, in its orbit around the galaxy, right? So there's also this. This is also a system of particles, um, system of masses. And then finally, the third category, I would say, is solid objects. And the classic physics solid object oh, is the wrench. Here, let me just, here, here we go, let me. A wrench. This is always the textbook solid object. Here we go. I'm going to give you a perfect drawing of a wrench. Wow, look at that. Yeah, that's not much better. A wrench, a solid object, is really a collection of little individual atoms held together by chemical bonds. But you can actually think of that as a bunch of little elements all interacting and acting as one object. All right, this is the easiest one to think about because you think of a solid object as as a single particle or a single mass. So if we want to think this way in terms of collisions, sort of two important points. Let's see, one is if um, there are no external forces, if there are no external forces, um, the total momentum Momentum of, on the, of the system is conserved. So we still have conservation of momentum. Nothing special here is conserved. All these interactions are internal, therefore conservation of momentum still exists for any of these as they evolve. So we'll use this a little bit. But the more interesting, insightful one is this, um, the system follows Newton's laws uh, like a single object at a location called at its center of mass. All right, this is the concept we want to talk about, the center of mass of a system. So we can think of each of these as having a center of mass, and in terms of that center of mass, the object is just moving along, obeying Newton's laws. If there's no external forces, it's either just sitting still or it's moving at a constant velocity because it has a constant mass and it has to have a constant momentum. The whole solar system is just drifting along even though all the orbits are happening inside. If I throw this wrench, it'll just move along. So we're gonna work on a few of these mathematically and see how we can use these ideas to solve problems.